The Academic Staff Union of Universities says Nigeria may yet again witness another industrial action in tertiary institutions due to small budgets allotted to the education sector and poor remuneration. As President Professor Emmanuel Oshodeke says during the campaign and election earlier this year, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu promised to increase the education sector to at least 15 percent or over. Similarly, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization also recommended for member states a 26 percent benchmark allocation for the education sector. Oshodeke, however, says ASU was saddened when the 2024 education budget was announced to be 2.18 trillion naira or 7.9 percent of the budget. Oshodeke also advised the government to meet with the cabinet members and increase the budget to 15% or more. Peter Ogudoro, an education researcher, joins me to unpack this latest development. Thank you so much for your time, Peter. It's my pleasure to join you. Now, how does ASU's uh, condemnation of the low ed education budget uh, align with existing research on the impact of funding on the quality of education in Nigeria? Yes, of course, as uh, you have heard over and over, money accelerates uh, all things, especially when education is involved. You need money to recruit, uh, train, uh, and motivate uh, the best hands who can run your classrooms. You need money to buy laboratory equipment. You need money to send um, your lecturers uh, to global uh, conferences where they can exchange views and learn from their counterparts in other parts of the world. Uh, you need money for, for, for quite a lot. And we know that in the case of Nigeria, we haven't fared well when it comes to funding education. And the reason why this has been the case is the fact that uh, the politicians who run our country have for decades refused to uh, recognize and respect and work with the fact that um, education uh, is indisputably uh, the bedrock of development. You get it right and every other thing uh, becomes easy for you to fix. Uh, but we haven't been able to get them to think properly and I think that one of the major reasons why this has remained so is the fact that the people running your country are people who train their own children abroad and so they do not win the shoe and therefore uh, don't understand um, how much pain people are going through uh, trying to get good quality education. So they don't wear the shoe and they do not wear, they do not know where it pinches. Mm. I mean, in your opinion, what role does adequate budget allocation play in fostering a conducive academic environment? I, I would like to put this vis-a-vis -vis to ensure that also Nigerian institutions, public institutions are globally competitive. We know that uh, countries like the UK and make a lot of money from foreign, uh, well, I call it a, a, a subscription of foreign pupils will come into the UK to actually study. So uh, how will adequate budget you know, uh, allocation help position the public you know, tertiary institutions to be more competitive, particularly globally? Yeah, so that, that's the point. If you fund the education system well and get other aspects of the system Right. Uh, what you will find is that the money we spend to send our children abroad uh, will no longer be sent abroad. And you can now convert that money to the improvement of um, uh, local infrastructure. So our roads will benefit from uh, not using our heart, you know, and money to send our children abroad. Uh, uh, maybe you are not aware of this. The truth we know today is that um, the money we spend on training a few Nigerians abroad, just a handful of people in America, um, UK and Canada is significantly higher than the entire uh, federal budget for education, uh, which is uh, supposed to be catering for over 50 million children. And the people you are spending this money on abroad are not up to 50,000. So the money you spend on on less than on fewer than 50,000 young Nigerians is significantly higher than the money you are spending on over 50 million uh, children and young persons in Nigeria. So if you fix your education, uh, you will stop spending that money and all of that money will now be available to you uh, to um, uh, give our people good quality uh, internet access, fix our roads, and uh, of course, give us electricity. And when that happens, you discover that even the uh, Naira that is giving us very serious problem in terms of its relationship with the dollar. 
will no longer be so. So a major driver uh, that has, um, you know, made nonsense of the strength of the Naira is the fact that we're spending a lot of money on training our children abroad. And the reason why that is, the, that is so is the fact that we are not funding our local uh, institutions that provide education adequately. And so parents are under obligation to give their children the best education they can afford. And so those who are willing to make the sacrifice send them abroad. And in the process, we lose uh, the uh, scarce foreign exchange that um, everybody talks about now. So it's, it's, it's an open secret. Fix the education and you will save money, which you can use to do other things locally and then be able to at least attract uh, students from other African countries to come and study here, rather than the current situation where Nigerians are looking for education, even in Benin Republic, Cameroon, Togo, you know, and Sierra Leone, and all over the place, just because we are not getting it right back home. All right. Now, there has been talks that uh, many of these tertiary institutions can be self-funding or self-funded, if at all uh, they choose to sort of, uh, permit me to use the word, maybe think outside the scope. We know that, uh, I mean, at the early stages of Nigeria's educational, what I call it, journey right now, uh, it used to be, you know, top-notch, one of the best, if not the best in Africa. But at some point, it looks like uh, things sort of f fell apart. So I just want to know, in your own opinion, do you think the Nigerian public tertiary institution has the capacity to uh, be self-funded or self-financed and also still maintain that... Uh, quality that you know it used to have in the past uh, at the at the moment the answer is no because we haven't put the right systems in place to empower uh, our uh, local in institutions to be able to take care of themselves uh, maybe you didn't know this uh, the, even the little money that students pay as school fee goes into um, a pause from which even the first chancellors cannot easily withdraw money and do what they want to do uh, it's difficult to attract good quality lecturers from around the world because you you don't have the latitude to to to, to employ you know lecturers to fill uh, existing vacancies at the time you think those vacancies need to be filled because of the uh, bureaucracy involved in getting approvals from relevant authorities whether it's um, a state university or a federal university so we haven't um, achieved university autonomy and so you can't be expecting universities to uh, give you what they do not have the capacity to give you. You haven't given them autonomy. And so until you give them autonomy, they won't be able to uh, find sorry, the resources. Sorry, autonomy in what context? Autonomy to spend money. Yeah, you have autonomy to spend money, autonomy to, to employ at the time they, they see the need to employ. As we speak today, the average vice chancellor in running a fair university in Nigeria cannot uh, wake up tomorrow and say, I have seven vacancies in the, in the Department of Chemistry, and I want to fill them within the next one month. You have to first make a request to the Federal Minister of Education through National Universities Commission, and the bureaucracy uh, is such that it might take you up to two, three years before you can get approval to fill those vacancies. And so if you don't have good quality lecturers, you will discover that um, you are not going to attract even patronage from um, good, um, you know, corporate entities that would want you to do research for them and through which you can make money to start thinking about being self-funded. And of course, you will also not be able to attract good quality students who have money from around the world to bring in dollars and pay school fee. And so I, the whole idea of trying to, um, you know, get universities to uh, fund themselves when we have not empowered them to do so, it amounts to placing, you know, the can before the horse. It has never worked anywhere. It's not going to work in Nigeria. Peter Ogundoro, thank you so much for your time. It's my pleasure.